generals know a lot about military strategy, and so we ought to kind of decouple the and just focus on the military strategy for a second, where they know that what the last administration did was just stupid. So first, Obama wanted to walk away, and then he said, oh, I can't do that because I did that in Iraq, and it just was horrible. So it was the idea is, well, we'll build up the Afghan army, and we'll let them fight, and then we'll just gradually walk away. Well, the problem with how we did that was we built up this Afghan army over 300,000 people. We sent them off into the field. But then Obama, because he wanted to see our commitment go consistently down, kept putting down lower and lower troop levels and more and more restrictions. And so what happened was the Afghan army's out there. They're fighting, but they're taking horrendous casualties, and they're really not capable of sustaining themselves. And, and we're not giving them the assistance that allows them to do that. So the military strategy, and this actually didn't come across in the speech, the president actually made that decision weeks ago where he basically decentralized the military part of that and said, you guys start doing the things that are right to do. And so they've already started to expand what's called the advise and assist mission. And while that important, it's not the number of troops, but it's what they're doing. It's, and they're, where they're helping the Afghans is in fire support that limits their casualties in conflict, logistical support, and in uh, medical support and evacuation. And what that allows the Afghans to do then is they're the ones who are really fighting this war, but they'll be able to better hold terrain away from the Taliban, and we can do that in a sustained way over time without just burning through the Afghan military. That's a huge change. It's a big, big change, and, but that's just the military piece of it. I mean, Trump had to go back and, and know that all of his comments about Afghanistan in the past were going to be um, dredged up because this was a, 180 degrees from, from what he used to, to think. I mean, should he get credit for, for listening to generals? I, I mean, I think other presidents might get new generals. If generals keep telling them they need to, to be, you know, to add more troops, add more troops, like finally they put some new generals that, that don't want to do that. I mean, we haven't been, that hasn't been the tact the last eight years. Well, for, I get, Trump a lot of credit because, look, I've only been following him since his first day on the campaign trail. You know, the tweets and all the other stuff aside, the fundamental principle of his foreign policy is America first. And what that means is I'm going to put the interests of the country first. And the interests here are really twofold. One is we don't, have, we don't want Afghanistan to be a source of regional instability in the region that's bad for us. It's bad for our friends and allies in the region. It makes our job harder. And the other is we don't want it to be uh, a platform for transnational terrorism. So the question is, is there a strategy that will do that? And this administration, to their credit, looked at everything. They looked at everything from let's just pull the plug and walk away to doing this. And then the president said, OK, what's in the best interest of American people? The politics aside and everything else aside. And then he picked that course. That's exactly what presidents are supposed to do. Hey there, thanks for checking out CNBC on YouTube. Be sure to subscribe to stay up to date on all of the day's biggest stories. You can also click on any of the videos around me to watch the latest from CNBC. Thanks for watching.